Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Bergeron Briefs. For those of you who haven't seen the show before, my name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell. Uh, there are 67 of us at Myrick O'Connell. There are a lot of lawyers, and therefore everybody gets to do what they like to do. I like to do elder law. Um, these shows are meant to supplement the presentations I do at the Senior Center, uh, at the Hudson Senior Center, by letting you meet the people and hear about the programs that it's important for you to know about as seniors. So two people that you need to know, you may have already met, right? One of them is Sam Wong, uh, who runs your, your Department of Health here, and the other is Katie Callow, who changed her name on me from the last time she was here, um, but who you may have met, you, I think you met before because I interviewed you when you were starting to work on the Dementia Friendly Communities Initiative. Right? Yes. So yep. we're gonna talk about that initiative in a few minutes, but first, Sam, I just wanted to get kind of an overview from you. You've been here now for a while. Um, what is what is your role? What is the role of the Department of Health in, in the in the community, from your perspective, especially as it relates to seniors? The role of the Board of Health, which we all like to call in the past, has changed over the years, has evolved. In the past, Board of Health has always been viewed as more of a regulatory agency. We do right. restaurant inspections, septic inspections. Doing restaurant inspections, inspections. Right. septic, right, right. Not that those are not important, we continue to do, do those. Right. But over the past um, several, maybe 10 years or so, we've got into the business of community health and prevention speci specifically. Community health and prevention. Th that's those right. are big, those are big. And, and, and we all know that um, when somebody develops a disease, it's a lot more costly, not only to the person having the disease, but also the financial cost to the society is a lot higher. So if we can prevent it from happening again, and beforehand, it's always more beneficial, more efficient that way. So some of the program we got into um, in the past few years, including helping people to quit smoking, we have um, certified um, smoking cessation counselors mm -hmm. with us. And we help seniors, specifically seniors, to go into their homes to do home safety assessment mm -hmm. to reduce their rate and the risk of falling. Which w I've often talked to seniors about and said, you know, that's so important because they all want to stay at home. That's but I right. tell them, I said, you know, it's great to stay at home as long as it's safe. Mm -hmm. But if you fall down, if you break your hip, this is a one-way trip and it's not good. Right? No, not so, at all. So a lot of it is making that home a safe place. That's great that you're actually going in. That's yeah. right, it's prevention. Prevention. And, and not only do the home safety assessment, we also look at the seniors' um, con situation or condition. We might refer them to take some Tai Chi classes to improve on their balance. I see, yeah. And some other educational classes as well. Yeah, which um, they wouldn't necessarily know about, of course, right. because you're at that's home right. and you wouldn't be, you know, necessarily connected with that. Yeah. And, and a lot of those courses, or programs, um, being held at the senior center, so it's convenient to go to. Yeah. If, if you have transportation issue, the senior center they have buses to pick you up, and it's the best of all. All of these are free of charge to residents. Right. Your tax dollars at work. Their tax dollars. At Actually, work. no. It's not their tax, it's, it's somebody not else's tax dollars. Correct, correct. So all of these programs are done without costing the town any money. And how exactly do you, that, that's, I always say that money follows good ideas, but I, don't, I didn't know that it just fell out of the sky like that. That's great. Well, if the that's sky great. happens to be the state government. <laughs> oh yes, the state government. And, and, what and, what and, they and, always and, think of as the evil state government, but by the way, it's providing the money. We, for we, we, pay, we all pay enough state taxes right. and federal right. taxes. So one of the way that I can, one of the things that I can do is to help bring those tax dollars back to the town right. to provide those services to, to the residents. That's, that's, so those are, really, those are really exciting programs and I think kind of feed into this. So, so Kelly, can you just talk once again, remind folks, because it was, a lot of last year that you were, that in 2016, that you were working on this, this Come to Be Dementia Friendly initiative. Can you just kind of talk to folks about what that was about and, 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 and your role, how that worked, and, and, fr and, then, and then I'd like the both of you to be kind of commenting on, from your perspective, where does that go? You know, how, how, how what does a so-called dementia friendly community look like from your perspective? And, and how are, are dementia symptoms addressed as a public health as a public health matter. So to start, t tell yeah, us a little sure. bit about the initiative. Um, so I believe the initiative started in the 
spring of 2015 where we got a group together. Um, we called them our action team, and it was a group of individuals in the community, yeah. stakeholders, key stakeholders, residents, um, and even some people who were really touched by dementia as a whole. Um, and we actually went out into the community and did a ton of surveying of the community to see what the community knew about de dementia in general mm -hmm. and how to approach dementia um, as those individuals came into their businesses, banks, uh, local government, attorney's offices. Really we, across we the board. We went to everybody. Yeah. A lot um, of sectors, different pieces of the community. Yes. Right? Yep. And that was very conscious. You were trying yep. to reach this broad array of people. Right, exactly. So so our surveying team and our action team went out and did these surveys. We got a ton back and we did a simple analysis of that mm -hmm. to figure out what um, the community needed to become dementia friendly. Yeah. Um, the ba basically what we needed was more education around dementia and more awareness, especially amongst young people, families um, around dementia. Yeah. So from that, we decided to create a dementia-friendly registry. Um, yeah. Our overarching yeah, talk about that a little. yeah. So our overarching goal is to um, make people with dementia and their families and loved ones feel safe within Hudson's bounds. Um, and so we created this registry where individuals can sign up their loved ones or themselves um, to be in this registry that's through the police station. Um, but it's supported and backed by the Senior Center and the Health Center. Um, and so they sign up here. So if somebody goes missing or gets lost, the police have all of their information in their database yeah. so they can go in and return their loved one home. So it sort of brings a security to these families. And we've had actually a lot of people that have been in the early stages of dementia come and sign up themselves. Which is pretty terrific. Yeah. That's really terrific. And I remember yeah. I remember talking to one of our police over in, in Marlboro, because as mm -hmm. you know, I've been involved in the, in the process yes. in, in, yep. in, in Marlboro. Um, and they talked about the fact that not only is this great in terms of finding folks, mm -hmm. or just helping, you know, if, you, if someone calls from the Walmart and there's somebody kind of confused in the, right. in the, in the, in the, in the parking lot, what do you do? But, but like for traffic stops, as, this, as the policeman said, you know, you get a traffic stop, the person is driving, and has some, at some level has dementia problems. Mm -hmm. That person's going to be really agitated and present, just like a person who's got a drug problem, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And police are attuned to what a drug problem looks like, and that's how they're going to react. Typically, unless you know, if you can actually look on your phone or look on your computer in your in the poli in the in yep. the police car, and, and oh, here's a picture of the guy, and look, this is this is this is a dementia issue. Right. So it just changes the whole conversation. Right. Yeah. And sp and guess and because because as the, as the, this policeman was saying, and I think he, I had talked to your chief about this too, and he said the same thing. He said, you know, that's where we want the police to be. Yeah. You know, the police, like you had talked about the board of health involving the police. He said when when that when he was younger, he said, you know, it, that was a real law enforcement. You know, you're you're solving. You know, you're fighting crimes. Right. Right. But he said this this notion, really evolving of the police as being people who are just there to help. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just really where the police want to be. So right. the, the registry you're describing is, but it's great that people are really signing up because I remember yeah. one of our concerns in Marlboro at least was we, we were doing this, we're like, now are people really going to do this? You mm -hmm. know? But they do. Yeah, I think we have about 40 people signed up. And we yeah. actually have a, a, a success story where somebody was returned home because of the registry. Because of the, that's great. Um, the police ended up that's finding great. them on the registry and returned, returned her home, and I him or her. And it's, well, it's um, important for people to know that 40 people have signed up. Yeah. Because once again, if I'm a person watching, yeah. and either I have early stage dementia or I'm a caregiver, my initial reaction would be, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. And, and by the way, those, those those records are all they're all confidential. All records, confidential. Right? The only people who have access to those is the police station. We do not have access. The senior center doesn't have access. It's only the police officers. It's only the police. That's yeah, and it's great. in their secured system. So, I'd like to kind of give get a sense from the two of you now. Have, now you haven't gone through this process, and you, Sam, have really, I just think done a great job, of 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 causing the community to understand um, or to be aware of strategies that can be approached as public health strategies, right? Which I think is just terrific. 
How do you think about a, a dementia-friendly community as a public health issue? And, and, and what, from your own perspective, what does a dementia-friendly community look like? Because at the, at the end of the day, you know, not, we're not talking about the cure here. If we had the cure, well, then that's all great, and then we'll go on to another issue, right? But assuming the cure isn't real close, and that people are going to be living with this, what is a dementia friendly? How can I be living with this, and how can we be living with this, other than just shuffling everybody off to a nursing home and kind of closing your eyes? One of the issues that we, we, we all know that people, for people suffering from dementia or yeah. Alzheimer's disease, is that the society still have a stigma on those diseases. And, and, and one of the um, objectives of our program is try to break that stigma. Dementia is no different than somebody having diabetes. Symptom you, you, of a disease. E exactly. You don't get cured from a diabetes. You manage it. Same thing with dementia. You I manage see. it. I see. Yeah. We just want to create an environment that can help people support that, to manage their, their disease. And there's no shame. No, mm, people shouldn't feel shame that they have this disease. Right. I right. haven't seen anybody that feels shame that ha they have, they have that, diabetes. That diabetes or hyperpressure. No. No. The same things should apply to this. This is a neurological disease. And, and what we are trying to create is the um, overall environment to support that. And I suppose that that's a, it's an interesting challenge, though, because you always, when you think about kind of managing your diabetes, you think about that from a kind of a personal perspective. So I'm going to make sure I've got my insulin, I'm going to make sure my diet is right, I'm going to do these things. That's right. Whereas in, in terms of managing the, for, for dementia, you're really talking about managing kind of from a social perspective. Mm -hmm. So how, how can I walk into a restaurant with dementia and know that I can walk out having had a good time and not mm -hmm. having that's been right. embarrassed? Or that's how do I walk into a bank? So that's a, so it goes back to your education thing. Yeah, so we're, we've so been doing a ton of education around dementia sensitivity within the towns. Um, we've gone through two train the trainers, and we've trained train the trainers. Train well, the trainers. So train the trainers are where we trained about thirty individuals to go out into the community and train restaurants, banks, um, local officials, really anybody about how to become dementia sensitive. I see. And how to see. react to somebody who might be aggravated, who might be stealing due to their dementia, really yeah. anything that would come up that might be triggered because of the dementia disease um, and just really getting the word out there and how they should react to it um, and how to be sensitive in a way that's not putting a wall up. That's not putting a wall up. Yeah. By the way, who was your trainer? Who is our trainer? Tammy. She's from the Pleasantries. The wonderful She's Tammy awesome. <laughs> That's right. She's so we good. Are, we, we, in some ways, I feel like so much of this program are like star-crossed, you yes. know? Yes, yeah. That the person who invented memory cafes in Massachusetts, the yep. first memory cafe, happens to be have her place in Marlboro, right. right? And is like here all the time. Right, right? yeah. So she, she's been training the train the trainers, and all of our police officer and firefighters have been trained also in dementia sensitivity. Oh, that's pretty terrific. So they've all gone through it, and they all know how to react. And we've actually had a few touching stories from the police officers about how they've changed their views and how they approach people who may be confused in the community. Can you just give me an example, without naming any names, can you just give me an example of that, of, that's of someone who's you know, really had a kind of a different, or a change in terms of the way they might approach a problem? I, if, I can't, if you can't speak yeah, for yeah. other for, no, no, no. for the officers. No, 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 um, no, no. I just didn't know if there was any. It was a particular story that you said. Oh, well, that's a really. Well, we do. We had an officer who um, had come across the situation, and like the registry, had just approached it in a very calming way, and took her and made made them feel very comfortable. Because um, in the officer due had been to trained. the oh, training, see. yeah. That's great. Um, I obviously was not there, no, 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 so I can't really portray it correctly. I don't think. I think that's a story for them to tell. But, but no, but just. But the it notion. made a difference, right. um, and to just know that the training made a difference in the way that they interacted with the individual with dementia was just eye-opening and very touching for us to hear that what we're doing is actually making a difference in the community. And, and I would suppose that once you've done the training, especially in police and fire. It's like it gets around. If those yes. folks have been, now for new people coming in, mm -hmm. it just kind of becomes, 
you, you got that's part of the learning curve here you yep. know you really want to be kind of understanding that right, right. and one of the, our police officers is trained to be a trainer so if they get new firefighters or new police officers they would be able to give the training to them in-house or we're also in the process of making videos so we can show them a quick you're doing video, video. Who, so who's yeah doing the videos? Tammy's doing our videos as well and, and yes. where, where are those getting recorded you know? We don't know yet. So um, I was wondering if Hudson Cable was doing these. That's right. Hudson Cable's is not doing them. We're yeah. having them recorded so that they can be edited. Um, I see. I see. And so she's going to be doing them out of house, and yep. then we'd be able to share them with the community. That and that's I would think that'd be pretty wonderful mm -hmm. too. Now I was just yeah. wondering because I know one of the other ideas that came up. I can't remember if it was in Marlboro or in, in Northboro was to actually have the, the for the ones, for the schools, for the video station, for the cable stations that are connected to the schools to yes. actually have the kids develop and, pr you know, produce some skits. Yeah. You know, it, illustrating, you know, situ a situation, it's kind of mm -hmm. standard situation, showing the 10 signs of dementia, right? right? And showing how people may be able to react. Right. The notion being that, because I remember talking to some of the kids at Acibet about this. Yeah. And they were talking about. It. I said, and there were ten, like ten. Literally, there were ten of them, right? And so I said, so anybody here have family? Three out of ten. That's what's great about the dementia is is it's it. You feel like it's just a matter of people being willing to talk about it, right? Because everybody, so many people are being hit by it. That's right. So many people. I'm so surprised people. it was only three out of ten, if not eight out of as ten. As opposed to eight out of yeah. ten. Yeah. So from from each of your perspectives. Where do you, where does it go from here? What 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 else do you do you think at, at this point? Where, where would you be looking in order to try to continue this kind of movement, which has really been pretty amazing over the last two years? Um, what I envision is that the training just started. Um, the yeah. training just started about a couple months ago. So yeah. I think that we really want to get the training out into the community and get more people aware, get the more actual, businesses. The actual train, you know, you've got yep. the trainers trained, but now you want right. the trainees Right, we trained. want, the, yep, the yeah. businesses trained, the restaurants trained, the yeah. banks trained. I think we just want the community to be aware of dementia and how to react um, to an individual with dementia with just pure sensitivity. With just pure sensitivity. Yeah. Now do you have in your in the back of your mind mm -hmm. a, a, a timeline? When, when do you think that you would like to get that first pass of training to folks done by? I don't think it will ever be done. Yeah, it must be a <laughs> I really don't think it will ever be done. Um, due to the fact that I don't think people can ever stop learning. I think that we would be able to get a good majority done within the year. Yeah. Um, but I don't think with new businesses coming in and new employees, yeah. the turnover of college kids going back to college, the training is truly is never going to be done. It's just constant. We're, yep. It's just constant. Now, right. I'm just curious, are you doing anything in, in at, at Hudson High School? And the reason why I ask that is, is as you know, Acibet's doing something, right? Yep. Acibet is really... It's amazing the notion yeah. of they're, they're wanting to basically become the first dementia-friendly yeah. um, uh, technical school, right? Right, and kind of do it system-wide. And I know I've talked to the Mayor Vision over in Marlboro, who has expressed an interest in having trying to get Marlboro High School and the system yeah. to be dementia-friendly. I didn't know if you. If you we would, had discussed it. Um, nothing concrete. Nothing so nothing that I would be yeah. able to share. No, that's okay. I'm just um, but. Janice Long, who's the Senior Center Director, and I, we've discussed it multiple times, and we think it would truly be a good way to get in and educate the young um, yeah. so they can carry it through their lives. Because they probably have grandparents with dementia or great-grandparents right. with and dementia. And once you train them, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, it struck me in the, in, the, in the technical school because they were saying, well, we want, we want training that is kind of unique to each of the shops. And then they were going through what they do in their training restaurant people right. and they're training hairdressers and they're mm -hmm. training plumbers and it's like mm -hmm. everybody that goes into their home into somebody's yeah. home and these are local people so right. they're going to be chant many of those are going to be staying local right right so ultimately to have them into it it's just terrific. It's so ideal right. Sam from your perspective from your perspective where would you go from here are there any other particular things that you think would really be useful because you certainly have a community now that has become very aware of the uh, and interested in this. Mm -hmm. There's a couple other areas that yeah. I think the um, program can grow into. Yeah. One is 
we've talked about this is finding way to help. By the way, have you two been together for a long time? You're a quite amazing team, <laughs> right? A couple years. Just, I've only been working for the town for two years. For two years? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Now, are you, are, you a, are you a foreign person? Are you from Am this I area? My foreign. Are you from oh this area gosh. originally? Uh, no, I graduated college and I started working for Sam. Oh, yeah. You're yep. local. Yeah, you're, you're local. All right, just check. <laughs> right. Because I know Sam was kind of notorious, but I think I only met you through this <laughs> process, right? And then I, oh. I never watched this kind of di dialogue between the two of you. Yeah. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there are a couple of area that yep. areas that I think the program can evolve into. Yep. One, we talk about this, is finding ways to provide some care and support for the caretakers. For the caregivers, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and just imagine if you're helping one of your family members may have a m moderate or a severe case of dementia, it's pretty stressful to care for that person 24-7. I watched my dad do this with my mom, mm -hmm. and and my mom and be, and my mom was just so afraid of his ever leaving. Mm -hmm. So for like a year, like he couldn't leave the house. He just that's right. Please, please, Phil. She said, "Don't please don't leave." You know, because she was she didn't she was afraid that because she knew she couldn't remember. So and, and so for him, it was it was tough. Tough, it, it, tough. It was, it's, it's very totally. very difficult. Very yeah. very difficult. So we we'll talk about maybe providing some sort of respite care yeah. type of program. Um, we have something at the senior center that's yeah, ongoing. Yeah, Janice offers. Um, yeah. And, and, and but that. but we want to expand it. We want yeah. to 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 do more. Um, we, we're trying to strategize to to see what we can do. The second area that mm, recently um, a resident came to me and and they heard about the dementia friendly community program. It's been very successful and uh, especially the registry. She mentioned something about what about those people that are um, suffering from um, autism or other type of mental health. I see, yeah. Can we expand our dementia friendly program to in right. include um, folks that are suffering from those diseases? I see, so it's almost a parallel because there are, as you just, as Very you, similar when you say it, you say to right. yourself, wow, that's so similar, right? They're so similar. And, and Once and again, it's not. This is not mm -hmm. a. It's, it's a. St it's a stigmatized it disease. Absolutely, it's, it's the about same, a. Same it's about community support. Yeah, same right. situation, and, and and we doesn't have to create a new program just for that. Maybe it could be a part of the uh, mental health friendly community right. program. Right. And 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 that may be something that we can talk about and and grow the program into support more residents that way. That's really fascinating. And that would also take in a, a, a slice of the, uh, you know, almost the other side of the population, a slice of the, of the younger population, right? That's right, that that's has, right. Where they have a lot of those issues and there's those kinds of tensions and there's the stigmas and there's all that jazz. And, and, and I also want to have a shameless plug to our mental health screening. Yes. Uh, we provide that program at our town hall. We have a mental health screening kiosk, which is available for any residents to come in to do a very quick couple minutes mental health screening. Yeah. If you don't feel comfortable doing that in the public, yeah. you can always take a wallet card and bring it home. You can do it online yeah. at the um, privacy of your own home. You can online. do it online. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's exactly the same screening. That's great. And, and whatever the results, we provide uh, ro local resources so that you can get treatment. I think what, what you folks are doing is just terrific. And I think, well, once again, you've heard me use that line, money follows good ideas. I think where you're going, there will always be money for this. I mean, money will just show up because it's just the right thing, right? What you're doing is the right thing. And, it's bec and it, there are just, there are some amazing things about Hudson, which I have to listen to my wife talk about because she's from Hudson, right? And I'm from Marlborough, so I was like, oh, Hudson's great now, you know. But this, what you're doing is just, is really astonishing. So thank you very much, both of you, for coming on. I really appreciate it. I hope for people who've got questions about this, right, they can, they can contact you. Absolutely, right? just, just stop by, yeah. just mm -hmm. stop by Town Hall. I hope you found this as interesting as I have. What, 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 what Kelly and Sam are doing are just really, in many ways, transformative in terms of getting a community to, to t think about uh, 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 Alzheimer's disease and, and the other diseases that cause dementia as really being public health issues that can be approached this way. It's very, very exciting. So thank you very much for watching. Thanks for watching this installment of Bridge Run Briefs, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.